Raul Ricardo Sarinana and his estranged wife, Kathy Lynn, repeatedly abused and ultimately killed their 11-year-old nephew, Ricky Morales, leaving him to die alone in a closet on Christmas Day 2005. They had been convicted in March 2005 of first-degree murder and torture in Ricky's death, with the two separate juries one for each defendant hearing evidence also recommending that the pair be executed. Rahul Sarinana kicked the child to death after the boy threw up a meal his aunt had made on Christmas Day 2005. Months earlier, Rahul Sarinana allegedly killed Ricky's 14-year-old brother, Conrad, in a Randall Washington mobile home, where the Sarinanas lived with their two small children and nephews prior to relocating to Corona. The Morales brothers went to live with the Rahul and Kathy after their mother was briefly jailed in an assault case in Los Angeles County and their father was deported. Kathy Sarinana was sentenced to death in Riverside County on June 26, 2009. Rahul Sarinana was sentenced to death in Riverside County on July 2, 2009. The marriage of Rahul and Kathy Sarinana was a match made in hell that resulted in the deaths of two defenseless boys, a judge said Friday before sentencing the Corona couple to death. Rahul Ricardo Sarinana, 42, and Kathy Lynn Sarinana, 32, were convicted in March of torturing and murdering 11-year-old Ricky Morales, their nephew. Authorities have said they believe the couple also killed 13-year-old Conrad Morales, Ricky's brother, in Randall, Washington charges have not been filed in that death. In pronouncing sentences for the Sarinanas in Superior Court in Riverside, Judge Paul E. Zellerbach followed the recommendations two juries made in April. A sentence of death in California is automatically appealed. Kathy Sarinana will be the 16th woman on California's death row. Overall, 680 inmates await execution. The most recent execution was in January 2006. Zellerbach said a dominant factor in his decision was the way Ricky was abused repeatedly by both Sarinanas. In autopsy photos shown at the trial, the boy's body was covered with new and old scabs, bruises, and scars, and a pathologist testified that Ricky had cracked ribs and a torn lung. The ongoing and almost mind-numbing extent of the torture inflicted on these boys, is horrifying, Zellerbach said. Ricky died in a closet at the Sarinana's Corona home on Christmas Day 2005 after Rahul Sarinana kicked and beat him for cleaning a bathroom too slowly, according to trial testimony. Rahul Sarinana also told police he had beaten Conrad and later found him dead. The older boy's body was found encased in concrete in a trash can outside the Corona home. In a courtroom packed with members of the Sarinana and Morales families and members of the two juries, five of Ricky and Conrad's relatives told the court Friday how the boys' deaths have devastated their family. Rosa Sarinana, the boy's mother, described how Conrad and Ricky always knew when she was upset and tried to help. Now her main consolation is her youngest son, the child she was carrying when she learned of Conrad and Ricky's deaths, she said. She sent Ricky and Conrad to live with the Sarinanas when she and other relatives couldn't care for them. How can I enjoy life after what they've done to my sons? Rosa Sarinana said. God has given me another chance, but it's not the same. She and the boy's sister, Destiny Morales, 19, said they believed death sentences would serve justice, although Rosa added that Rahul and Kathy should suffer the torture her sons did. Jurors were released from their obligations in April but some returned Friday. The harrowing experience of the three-month trial has stayed with Brad Wright Stone, 34, a Riverside resident who was foreman of Rahul Sarinana's jury. I pretty much think about it every day, Wright Stone said. I wanted to make sure that our decision that we came up with was upheld, and if it wasn't I wanted to know why. Ricky and Conrad Morales were brothers that were born into a family and system that practically guaranteed that they never stood a chance. They were born to a drug-addicted mother who sold drugs to support her habit. Their young childhood was one that was filled with drug abusers, drug deals, violence, SWAT teams, child protective services, extreme physical abuse and neglect. They and their siblings were in and out of protective custody by CPS constantly. When their mother, Rosa Morales, was sentenced to prison on drug charges, she sent 13-year-old Conrad to live with her brother, Raul, a convicted felon, and his lovely wife Kathy Sarinana, aren't they a handsome couple? who were living in Randall, Washington at the time. Ten-year-old Ricky was sent to live with her mother. Ricky did not do well with grandma, telling a trusted teacher, my life is not worth living, and writing, die Ricky, die, on his arm. The school, fearing that a ten-year-old was suicidal notified Child Protective Services, who had Ricky admitted to a psychiatric facility for treatment.
He was placed under the supervision of social worker, Elia Godinez. By this time, Rosa had been released from prison but was in no position to reclaim Ricky or Conrad. According to Rosa, the social worker told her, Conrad seems to be doing fine in Washington, so why don't you send Ricky to Washington, too? You've got one week to send him to Washington or I'm going back to court, and your kids are going back into foster care. In hindsight, it would have been in the best interest of these children for the social worker to have done her job and sent the case back to family court. But instead, Ricky was sent to live with Uncle Rahul and Aunt Kathy. Well gee Will Akers, if Grandma was bad do you think Uncle Rahul was any better? At first, things seemed to be going well with this newly created family. Rahul reported to his family that both boys were excelling in school, getting good grades, making friends, and playing on the local sports teams. He wove a tale that painted an idyllic life with the boys prospering and flourishing in their new home. But soon the family would learn that it had all been a monstrous lie. Within a few months, neighbors, police, and the boy's sister reported that both Conrad and Ricky were being physically and sexually abused. Even though Ricky was never enrolled in school, Conrad was. Classmates reported that Conrad started wearing makeup to hit the bruises and complained about his uncle hurting him. After local police notified Washington Child Protective Services, they opened an investigation only to close the investigation and call the allegations unfounded. Life for these brothers continued as normal, a living hell. When their mother, Rosa Morales, finally was ready to bring the boys home to California, Rahul made excuses. He said he couldn't afford the airfare. When the boy's mother pressed the issue in October of 2005, Rahul and Kathy reported that Conrad had run away from home. They said that he had been acting out and had become a discipline problem both at home and at school. They awoke one morning to find Conrad had disappeared. Rahul claimed that they were frantically searching for Conrad, but that it would be difficult because Conrad had run away with an older gay lover. Remember folks, he's 13 years old. He told the family that Kathy was so distraught he was sending her and their two young children, yikes, they breed, to live with her sister in Sacramento, California in October of 2005. But Rahul vowed not to leave Washington without Conrad. But both Rahul and Kathy told social services that Conrad had been sent to live with a different relative out of state. Again, social services closed the investigation. Ricky and Conrad's aunt, Berta Servalos, went to the address that Rahul had given in Sacramento on Christmas Eve, 2005 to visit with the boys. She discovered that Rahul had given them a fake address. On Christmas morning, Ricky called the Servalos home and begged to be allowed to return. The family began to make plans for Ricky to return home. Sadly, it would all be in vain. On the evening of December 25th, 2005 when most children have played themselves out with their new toys and stuffed themselves with Christmas cookies and food, Ricky Morales lay dying in a closet. Not that Rahul or Kathy could be bothered with a little thing like Ricky dying. No, they sat down with family and friends for a Christmas feast while Ricky died from massive internal injuries. According to Rahul Sarinana, it began simply enough, Ricky complained of not feeling well, after a severe beating, and refused to eat his dinner. Kathy was appalled and offended that Ricky would refuse her delectable cuisine. For punishment, Rahul ordered Ricky to clean the apartment's bathroom. It appears that Ricky was not working fast enough for Rahul's liking, so he kicked him. Ricky vomited and Rahul kicked him again. Not satisfied, Rahul kicked the 11-year-old boy a third time. Then he dragged the boy into the bedroom and threw him in the feces-strewn closet, where he repeatedly kicked and stomped the boy as Ricky tried to escape. Then he slammed the door and went to eat his Christmas dinner. He's just Father Christmas isn't he? When Kathy went to check on Ricky hours later, she found him dead. Frightened, she called the police. Ricky was pronounced dead on December 25, 2005. On December 26, 2005, both she and Rahul were brought in for questioning by Corona police. Rahul admitted to disciplining Ricky, but never meant to hurt him. Right. Kicking, punching, and stomping on an 11-year-old boy is a common discipline practice. Both were promptly arrested. The police were then notified that there was another brother, who just happened to be missing. They returned to the Sarinana home, and found the body of 13-year-old Conrad. It had been stuffed inside of a trash can that was covered in plastic and duct tape then encased in concrete and stored on the carport of their Corona home. Rahul admitted that Conrad died after a round of discipline on or about August 22nd. 2005.
After the family began to become suspicious, he told authorities that they came up with the story of the older gay lover to cover up the murder. When the family moved from Washington to California, they brought Conrad with them, sick fucks, ain't they? It was around this time that they began to think about the necessity of killing Ricky as he had witnessed the murder of his brother. The autopsy of Ricky showed a history of severe abuse including old fractures, bruises, contusions and what appeared to be cigarette burns over his entire body. Riverside County Deputy Medical Examiner Dr. Mark Fiardo also found multiple external traumatic injuries, according to a pretrial brief filed by the prosecution. Scars on Ricky's body were consistent with being whipped with an electrical cord or similar instrument, the brief states. Ricky's scrotum was damaged with a penetrating laceration, oh dear God, and his scrotal sac was severely damaged. There were multiple scars to Ricky's scalp, primarily centered on the back of his head. He had a severe infection on the back of his legs. Finally, there were multiple circular injuries consistent with cigarette burns located throughout Ricky's body that were determined to be at least several weeks, if not several months, old. Witnesses reported that they had seen both Rahul and Kathy abuse Ricky. Kathy was reported to have treated Ricky as a personal slave ordering him to clean up after her and her children. Police and neighbors say the boys grew thin, while the sorry nanas and their two children showed no signs of undernourishment, duh, did you see the pictures of them? No autopsy reports were available for Conrad, but it is a safe bet that his body had the same evidence of abuse that Ricky's had. Both Rahul and Kathy were charged with first-degree murder, and child endangerment with a special circumstance of inflicting torture in the death of Ricky. Kathy has claimed that she has suffered from battered wife syndrome and had no knowledge of mistreatment or abuse of either Ricky or Conrad. Though Rahul has admitted to administering the beating that led to Ricky's death, he claims that the death was unintentional and an accident. The jury did not buy their lame excuses. Both were convicted of first-degree murder and the jury recommended the death penalty. They will return to court in June 2009 to be formally sentenced. Washington is currently planning on charging both for the murder of Conrad. The lives and deaths of Ricky and Conrad Morales is a sad commentary on the current state of child protective services. Two states, California and Washington both failed to protect these children. Even after multiple complaints of abuse and neglect, time after time CPS failed to take appropriate action. The end result, two dead boys. Neither child should have been placed with the sorry nanas. Vanessa Gallardo, the boy's sister constantly fought to gain custody of her brothers. She loved them and feared for their safety. But she was rebuffed by the system even though she has no criminal record, is a technical school graduate and gainfully employed. She has struggled to set an example for her siblings on how to lead a productive life. Now, she must live with the knowledge that her brothers were tortured and murdered by their own family. She said of the sorry nanas, they deserve the death penalty. I still think they are getting off easy with the death penalty, the way my brothers were tortured for so long. But to me, they, the sorry nanas, aren't even family. I don't feel bad for them. Two juries have recommended death for a couple who were convicted of torturing and killing their 11-year-old nephew last month. The Corona couple has been convicted of first-degree murder for torturing and killing their 11-year-old nephew on Christmas Day 2005. Separate juries heard the cases against Raul Ricardo Sarinana, 42, and Kathy Lynn Sarinana, 32. The jury hearing the case against Raul Sarinana arrived at a verdict Tuesday but Riverside County Superior Court Judge Paul Zellerbach ordered that verdict sealed until the jury hearing evidence in Kathy Saranana's trial completed its deliberations. That jury reached its verdict this morning. In his closing statement, Deputy District Attorney John Aki told jurors that Kathy Saranana abetted and took an active part in her husband's violent abuse of Ricky Morales and the boy's 14-year-old brother, Conrad. Aki reminded jurors that Kathy Saranana was the only one in the Saranana household who smoked, and an autopsy revealed numerous cigarette burns on Ricky's body, including some on the child's genitals. There's some kind of sadistic intimacy when you do that, Aki said. You're up close. You have to strip the victim's clothes off. When Ricky was asked by friends how he had received a black eye or bruise, the boy responded that he had been in a fight and excuse Kathy Sarinana instructed the child to use, according to Aki. The woman's lawyer, Patrick Rossetti, admitted the evidence was hard to stomach but asked jurors to fight off the emotional part and concentrate on witnesses' testimony. Rossetti mentioned two incidents in which the Sarinana's neighbors saw Rahul Sarinana choke and push his wife into a wall. 
The attorney argued Rahul Sarinana mentally tormented his wife, who went along with whatever her husband wanted to do out of fear for what might happen to the couple's two small children. According to the prosecution, on Christmas Day 2005, Ricky Morales became ill from internal injuries and was unable to digest a meal Kathy Sarinana made for the family. She was offended, and Rahul Sarinana forced the 11-year-old to clean the bathroom floor as punishment. Aki said the defendant kicked the child several times because he thought Ricky was not making an effort. Recalling Rahul Sarinana's own words to investigators, Aki said the defendant threw the boy in a bedroom closet, and when Ricky tried to open the closet door, Rahul Sarinana stomped him several times. The child died in the closet and remained there for hours until Kathy Sarinana called 911. Investigators allege the Sarinanas began abusing Ricky and Conrad within weeks of the boy's arrival at the couple's Randall, Washington, mobile home in late 2004. During the investigation of Ricky's death, Corona police found Conrad's body encased in a trash can filled with cement outside the defendant's Bell Avenue apartment. Authorities in Lewis County, Washington, are waiting for the outcome of the Saranana's trial in Riverside before a decision is made on whether to prosecute the pair there for Conrad's death. The older boy was last seen in August 2005, before the Saranana's relocated to Corona, according to trial testimony. The brothers were sent to live with Rahul and Kathy Saranana after their mother Rahul Saranana's sister was jailed in Los Angeles County on felony charges. Rahul Saranana's attorney, Victor Marshall, told jurors last week that no witness reported actually seeing the boys being abused. He said his client, jobless and emotionally unbalanced, suffered extreme stress and killed Ricky in a fit of anger. Rahul Ricardo Saranana's killing of his 11-year-old nephew should be considered second-degree murder because he did not intend to kill, his defense attorney told a jury Thursday. Attorneys made closing arguments in the murder trial of Saranana, 42, who is charged with a torture enhancement in the death of Ricky Morales. The boy died in a closet at his uncle's Corona home on Christmas Day 2005 after Sarinana kicked him for not cleaning a bathroom fast enough. Prosecutors are seeking the death penalty. The defendant's wife, Kathy Lynn Sarinana, also is charged with murder and was included in most of the trial, but she has a separate attorney and jury. Prosecutors also believe the couple killed Ricky's brother, Conrad, 13, several months earlier when the family lived in rural Washington. Conrad's body was found in the carport at the Corona home. Washington officials have said they plan to prosecute the couple. In 24 days of an emotional and sometimes graphic trial in Riverside County Superior Court, jurors heard that Ricky and Conrad were sent to live with the Surrey Nanas because other family members couldn't care for them. In his closing arguments, Victor Marshall, one of Rahul Saranana's two attorneys, said the boys had a rocky relationship with their mother, and their aunt and uncle at first provided them a happy home. Marshall described Rahul Sarinana as someone who had been abused when he was young and had an almost childlike mentality. He pointed to testimony that Rahul had been prescribed Effexor, a drug that treats depression and anxiety, and that he had trouble controlling his anger. The family which included the Sarinana's two young children was struggling financially, and Rahul did everything he could for his wife, Marshall said. In a journal entry that was shown in court, Conrad wrote about other family members being punished when Kathy Sarinana had a bad day. Marshall suggested Kathy Sarinana was the one in control of the family, the puppeteer who pulled her husband's strings. Marshall said several witnesses, including a child protective services worker who met the family in Washington, saw no signs of abuse on the boys other than injuries from normal accidents or schoolyard fights. The day after Ricky died, Rahul Sarinana called police to say he had hurt and possibly killed the boy while trying to discipline him. Marshall reminded the jury how Rahul Sarinana, in a recorded police interview that was shown in court, called his nephew a good kid and began to cry. The beating was severe and unjustified, but Rahul never intended to kill his nephew. That's why he cried, Marshall said. He's sorry. He did not expect this to happen. Deputy District Attorney John Aki summed up his rebuttal in one incredulous, rhetorical word, really. In his initial closing remarks, Aki again showed photos of injuries to Ricky's body. He reminded jurors of a pathologist's testimony that some of the bruises, abrasions, and wounds that looked like cigarette burns and marks made with an electrical cord occurred days or even weeks before the boy's death. When he was kicking that little boy and burning that little boy and beating that little boy, that was for discipline. Aki said. That is the definition of sadistic. After the Christmas Day beating, when Rahul Sarinana realized the boy could die, Aki said, 
he chose not to call for help but instead closed the closet door and sat down to a holiday meal. Aki said the Sarinanas had spun a web of deceit that Rahul hoped would culminate in people believing Ricky's death was an accident. Even under police questioning Rahul Sarinana never mentioned Conrad, whom he had already killed, until he wanted to make a deal with prosecutors to help Kathy, Aki said. Before jurors went into deliberations Thursday afternoon, Aki left them with a final image. A picture of Ricky and Conrad playing by a pool was shown, superimposed with a quote from Rawl's final police interview, These kids came along and ruined my life. If the jury returns a verdict today, the judge likely won't make it public until next week to avoid influencing Kathy Saranana's jury, which has not begun deliberations. The day after finding his nephew Ricky dead in a closet, Rahul Sarinana told a Corona police detective he killed the boy, but he hadn't meant to. Sarinana and his wife, Kathy, are charged with murder in the death of 11-year-old Ricky Morales. If convicted, they could face the death penalty. Police also believe the couple killed Ricky's brother Conrad Morales, 13, in Washington state several months before they moved to Corona in late 2005. The Sarinanas, who have two young children of their own, took Conrad and Ricky in after other relatives couldn't care for the boys. Attorneys for Rahul Sarinana maintain that he has anger problems and was under extreme stress. Kathy Sarinana's attorney contends his client also suffered abuse by Rahul. The Sarinana's trial is in its third week. Jurors on Tuesday saw a recording of Rahul Sarinana's first interview with Corona Police after they began investigating Ricky's death. Early in an interview that lasted almost four hours, Rahul Sarinana told Detective Jeff Edwards that Ricky had started out as a good kid. But the boy became disrespectful, Rahul said he wouldn't obey Kathy, he lied, he wet his bed, he would refuse to eat or would throw up afterward, and he'd cut himself with kitchen knives. When taking away TV privileges and toys didn't get Ricky to shape up, Rahul explained to Edwards, he and Kathy began beating the boy. First they used a belt, and after that wasn't enough, Rahul would kick him. That's what happened on Christmas Day 2005. Ricky had been told to clean the bathroom in the family's one-bedroom apartment, but he wasn't working fast enough for Rahul. In the interview, several times Rahul appeared distraught, sobbing and sometimes wiping his eyes as he described realizing Ricky was dead. Responding to a question from Deputy District Attorney John Aki, Edwards testified that Rahul's eyes became moist at one point as he talked about his wife. 